with Martin Bester. Good morning, Angels. Wednesdays on Breakfast with Martin Bester. Live from Cape Town this morning, it is my pleasure to welcome our special guests here in our uh, studio in Cape Town. Uh, we have from U Turn, Valerie Govender, and uh, also Brandon Manzoni. How's it? How's it? Welcome. Thanks for having us in Cape Town. Welcome to our city, and wow, what a privilege to be on the show and uh, being part of everything that's happening here in Cape Town with you guys. Are you from are you? How long have you been here? I'm brand new to the city. Well, not brand new, just over a year. Okay. okay from, from where? From where? KZN. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> and how is it so far? It's amazing. It's a beautiful city, and really enjoying it. And yourself, uh, Brandon? Yeah, no, I'm a um, Cape Town native, born and bred. Okay. Uh, I've been here all my life. Uh huh. Um, best city in the world. You reckon? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Eh? <laughs> so, so here's the thing, and I think it's a um, it's a common South African thing. It's definitely not just a Cape Town thing, and that is homelessness. Uh, I think it's a reality that most South Africans um, have become used to uh, seeing people, you know, living on the street. At a traffic light, you will see people asking for assistance, uh, and but it's a sad reality, mm. and it and it is uh, and it is a big problem, right? Absolutely. So the stats that we go with is fourteen thousand people here in the city of Cape Town homeless. Just here. Just here mm. in Cape Town, and one of the things that's really, really touched me since joining U Turn Homeless Ministries is is a phrase that says. We're one paycheck away from being homeless. Mm. Oh. And if you really consider that, mm. you know, the reality and the impact that for sure. anyone, sure. Mm. one paycheck away from being homeless. And, and that's, that's the thing. It's not always just people who have uh, been homeless for a long time. It's, it's people that end up on the street mm. for, for whatever reason. Um, and, and you see it. And I don't know why. I mean, the last time I was here, what was I here for? I was here for a concert. And I was walking along, and there's this, it's like a bridge, and then there's pedestrian area going under the bridge. You know where I'm talking about? It was a green point around there, and it struck me how many people were sleeping under that bridge. It's uh, with you know, and it, and you can tell they've made that their home. Mm. It's it's very very striking. Um, U-turn. I think that's a great name, by the way. Mm. <laughs> I mean that is, that says what you're doing right there. Tell me more about U-turn. So yes, as the name suggests, it's a U-turn. It's really an organization that exists because we believe that every single life is intrinsically valuable and nobody should have to live on the street. And that was the heart of the founder. In fact, she just made a practical response to people who are outside her home. Um, And she decided she's not going to just stand by and let them just walk. Uh, she decided to respond with love and give them a meal, and that turned into a, a weekly thing. And now, almost 30 years later, here is U Turn wow. continuing that um, mandate to be able to respond with love to people who, who are on the street. And the thing that makes U Turn so unique is it's not just about a soup and a blanket. Mm. We want to empower and journey. Now, that's the, the part of it that really, really caught my attention. Tell me about the process. It's a four-phased, unique approach. Mm. So it begins with uh, interaction at our service center. And one of the things that's really important here is the My Change voucher. It's really a responsible giving tool. This is, uh, you know what, so it's not just about handing out. Mm -mm. It's more about empowering and Mm. giving people uh, the dignity of choice to be able to make the decision to change. In fact, talking about my change, uh, currently our CEO is in the U.S. uh, at an awards uh, where the my change voucher has been uh, shortlisted as a finalist uh, across the world as a um, tool that is recognized Mm. to fight hunger and poverty. So there's nothing wrong, obviously, with uh, assisting people who are in need and handing something out, but the my change voucher... Mm -hmm. You got to earn it. Absolutely. So, what happens is at the interactive sites of our service centres, um, usually people would purchase a My Change voucher and hand it over to someone who's homeless instead okay. of, of it, giving just them anybody. money. Yes. Yeah, so, if you interact okay. with someone instead of giving money, just use the voucher. Okay. That would then get them mm. to one of our service centres, and the vouchers 
come in a pack of four, right. yeah. which allows them to have a meal, a shower, a change of clothing, and a safe space to sleep. How smart is that? That is very, very smart. But how can they? So there are two. There are two ways, as I understand it, to get a my change voucher to someone in need, and that is to buy it for them. Yes. Uh, can they also earn it, Brandon? Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, at the service centres, they have what they call um, voucher earnings. So if they, um, so once the guys actually come to the service centre, mm. um, they they get sent out on the streets to either you know like clean up or pick up the dirt or you believe it. Um, just do some general community help out on the streets, and then they get to earn the vouchers, which brings a little bit of dignity back to yeah. the guys, you know, yeah. being useful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, so they can and then with that voucher, you can obviously then you know get um, a safe space to sleep at night, get some clothes. Warm, uh, warm meal and a shower if the facility allows for it. I find that a lot mm-hmm. of people use the word empowering because it's a very strong word and it's a bit of a buzzword mm. as well. But this is this is really empowering because now you are making someone useful yeah. also, and they feel like they're contributing and earning yeah. something. I think being part of the community and I think the one biggest thing I've always I've noticed for me personally is with the homeless community there's a sense of invisibility. People look through them, pass them, don't want to make eye contact with them. Yes. In this way, you are now literally becoming part of the community again, and people can see you and you're being able to earn your way to get the stuff that everybody else has. Is U Turn and, and this uh, My Change voucher system, is it just a Cape Town thing? Well, we're hoping to roll it out currently in Gauteng as well. Hey. So it's not in Gauteng yet, but you're hoping to do it? No, it is in Gauteng. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh. Our operations just over a year in Gauteng. Okay. In fact, we just opened our most recent store last week okay. in Cresta. Oh. So we ah. now have two uh. of our retail stores in Gauteng, and we have one service center, and we have a transitional house in Sophia Town. Okay. Gotcha. Just lastly, do you see it making an actual change? Oh, absolutely. And how? Well, it revolutionizes the way people envision homelessness. It then empowers people of choice, uh, with the choice rather, to be able to change their lives. Mm. Um, one of the things that really, really s- sticks out for me as part of this phased approach to homelessness is when you're in that place, um, you have the power to change in your hands. So you can earn a voucher and come back tomorrow. And you journey through that first phase to rehab which is our second phase and then we go to our third phase which is um, a work readiness so we have three social enterprises as part of U-Turn which allows the champs to work in these stores um, getting the skills they need equipping them with training we also have full-time social workers and occupational therapists who really impact That's the journey incredible. to why is this project so close to your heart, Brandon? <laughs> um, I come from lived experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was, I was a drug. I was on substance abuse for about twenty-five years. Okay, so I come from that background. Um, I was homeless for about four years. Really? Yeah. Yeah, in um, Cape Town. In Cape Town, yeah. Oh. Um, living under bridges. Sleeping on people's stoops in their backyard, in their garages, finding any place I can find to sleep. It's exactly the place that you mentioned under the bridge. Yes. I lived there as well. What? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I basically, like I said, I, I come from a 25 year addiction. Um, I was a high functioning addict at one stage. Mm. I mean, I had a really good job, you know, everything was going well. Um, Treasures of the work sort of got to me a bit, and then I had some family trauma. Um, you know, and then you find an outlet for that. You know, you try and find sort of an escape, and mm. drugs became my escape. Um, and then you know, just spiraled out of that. It gets worse, and then you just lose yourself to the drugs. So you're a good person to ask, and <clears> I've <throat> always wondered how do you end up there? How does a person end up from being a fully functional member of society, family, and a job, to going to that? Um, well, I can only speak from my experience. Yeah. Um, that would have to—I would have to say—it was just um, the amount of trauma that I suffered in my life, um, be it personal or even physical trauma. Okay. Um, and how you really deal with that? Um, you don't want to deal with it. Exactly. You don't want to. You, you try to oh, find an escape for that. Yeah. You know. And yeah. in my case, drugs became that escape. Mm. Okay. okay. And. Um, the more you spirals. Just, you just continue with that. I mean, there, there's no going up from drugs. I mean, you're yeah. just going to go down. Yeah. You just, the spiral is, is a downward spiral. That's all that is. And I suppose the all-important question is, how does one get back out of that 
into society like yourself is there one day that you can remember is there one <laughs> person that you can remember yeah and i i mean this memory will be etched in my mind for yeah. probably for the rest of my life i mean i remember this one and i was laying on some random stoop i mean i was just, i was actually a friend of mine stoop that um i came to because you know i was i was i was such a low point where i wasn't even allowed my family even had written me off they basically ripped me off because I mean I'd stolen from them. I lied. I mean I was just the worst, absolute worst person that they'd wanted you that you'd want to deal with. Yeah. Um, and then I went to a friend of mine's place. He wouldn't allow me in the house. I was standing outside. Okay. Wow. Um, I came there for food. Yeah. And then um, I, I eventually got some, but then I left. But then I I had no other place to go. To. I mean I was literally I had nowhere to go. Yeah. And then it started raining. And then I ended up just creeping back onto stupid without him knowing, just to sleep there for the night. And I promise you, I laid there. And then the morning, I, I woke up and I actually called out to God. And I was like, sure. "What am I doing here? You know, like, why am I still here?" And I decided, you know what, year and no further. Like that's, absolutely, that's year and no further. I'm not going to do this because I've, I've got a daughter as well. Yeah. And I just thought, you know. I, I mean, is this is this is this what she's going to see her father as, you know? And then I just um, I decided, you know, that's it for me. And then I found Change myself, yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I found myself going to sure. the ark that he had. I got myself there. Um, I, when I got there, there wasn't actually a place for me. Yeah. I actually slept outside for two days yeah. until they let me in. And then they eventually let me in, and I stayed there for about a year. And then through the ark, I got to know about Uton. Um, sure. And then I got into the work readiness program. Um, I went through the three phases. And uh, it worked for you, absolutely. Brandon. It worked uh, for absolutely. you. How absolutely. many years now? Um, I'm clean. I'm clean for two years, 11 months, and 14 days. Yes, you are. <laughs> Amazing. I think you do incredible work, honestly, and good luck with your work in, in Gauteng as well. Um, I think it's something incredibly worthy, and, and you're making a difference. So to both of you, thank you for being on the show this morning. Valerie Gunder, as well as Brandon Manzoni, thank you for sharing, Brandon. We want to give 50000 towards this amazing project. Uh, specifically for the efforts in the Western Cape, uh, as well as Johannesburg. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for being there. And uh, as Felicity pointed out, you know, being the voices for the th often the voiceless. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we often just see a face and a pair of hands. And uh, thanks for being a voice. And keep it up, man. Good luck yeah. with your family. Thank you. Hey? Thank you. <laughs> and, and all that. And, and keep up with the efforts. And enjoy Cape Town. For long you'll talk about it into for sure, okay? Are you? Buy a donkey. You're with your own family. Breakfast with Martin Bester.